Maria, a bold and is your name is Jesus, your name is Lord, your name is higher, a bold and is your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Good morning, good morning, and once more, good morning. It's another beautiful day with the transforming woman, and we are more than pleased to have you here. We are very grateful that you are here, and we thank you for joining us this morning. Let us start with a special word of prayer. Heavenly Father, our Lord and our King, that they, of course, we are ever so happy to come into your holy presence just to be, be nourished by your word, to, to, to be changed by your spirit, to be touched by your love. As we are call, have come this morning, oh Father, to receive your word, we pray, Lord, do it like never before. Change our minds, change our hearts, change our ways. May we encounter you in a whole new level. Not like yesterday, not like weeks or, or years before, but Lord, in a whole new way, because that's the kind of God you are. Thank you for being who you are. May your name forever be praised. Amen. Amen. And what? Amen. Your name is Alpha and Omega. Your name is Alpha and Omega. You are wonderful. You are worthy of You are wonderful. You are worthy Your name is Alpha and Omega. Your name is Alpha and Omega. You are wonderful. Lord, you are worthy you are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are so precious. Oh, you are precious, oh Lord. You are so precious. You are precious, oh Lord. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are glorious. Who we give you glory, Lord. As we worship you, we give you glory, Lord. As we worship you, you are wonderful. You are worthy of You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are so loving. You are loving, oh Lord. You are so loving. You are loving, oh Lord. Yes, you are the Lord. The most high, yes, you are the Lord. 
you are the most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the most high. Yes, you are the Lord. You are the most high. Yes, you are my Lord. You are the most high. Yes, you are my Lord. You are the most high. Yes, you are rocking. You are the most high. Yes, you are rocking. You are the most high. We sing worthy, you are worthy, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. We sing worthy, Lord, you are worthy, King of kings. Lord of Lords, we worship you. We sing loving. Lord, you are loving. King of kings, Lord of Lords, you are loving. We sing loving. Lord, you are loving. King of kings, Lord of lords, we worship you. There is no one, there is no one like Jesus. There is no one, there is no one like you. There is no one. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one. There is no one like you. There is no one. There is no one like Jesus. There is no husband. There is no parents like you. There is no child, there is no friend like you, Jesus. There is no one, there is no one like you. Your love is chasing after us. Your love is chasing after us. Your love is chasing after us, Lord. Your love is chasing after me. So there is no one, there is no one like Jesus. There is no husband, there is no wife like you. There is no child, there is no home like Jesus. There is no friend, there is no one like you. Who can battle with your love? Who can battle with your love? Who can battle with your love? I said, no. Can you? Can you? you love that there is nobody? There is no one like you, love. There is none compared with you. Who can bond to what you love? 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 Lord, who can bond to what you love? There is nobody. 
unchangeable, unchangeable God. It doesn't matter what comes our love, you are still God. Reliable, reliable lover. It doesn't matter what comes our way, you are still God. For we have no other lover like you. We have no other lover like you. We have no other God like you. We have no other God like you. You have done what no man can do. And you keep doing what no man can do. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, um, Facebook family. Thank you, those of us who are on the Zoom this morning. You are very much welcome. And this is The Transformed Woman. We are excited to have you in our midst this morning. We are live on Facebook. Please, if you're watching us on Facebook, go ahead and click the share button and be a blessing to somebody. Invite somebody to join us this morning for fellowship. Share it on your page. Share it on your status. Share it to friends, whoever you know that you know that the video may be a blessing to. Please go ahead and share that video to them. And if you're actually watching us from the Zoom account, obviously the link has been shared already on the WhatsApp group. So all you need to do is to minimize your page, click on the link and share the video on your Facebook page as well. So thank you for joining us this morning. As I said earlier, this is the Transforming Woman and in short, it is called TTW. And the scripture we have for this morning, the second Corinthians chapter three, verse 15, which says, but we all we unveil faces, beholding as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord have been transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so what is CTW all about? It is a place where women gather, regardless of their age, their status, or their denomination, for fellowship, to behold the face of our Master, Jesus Christ. And in the course of that, they evaluate themselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual good. It is a place where women are trained to understand time, season, and stand the gap in the place of prayer for themselves, their family, and the nation. We use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman, depending on how hungry she is in need of the master's help. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place where we have only one objective and no alternative which is either jesus or jesus our mission is to gather to fellowship with the holy spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for god they are conscious of their life in the secret they are ready to fulfill purpose enjoy marriage and promote godly parenting our values are love, humility, compassion, giving, excellence, self-control, and sacrifice. <laughs> so that said, I'm very excited to welcome you all this morning. As you can see, maybe if you look at my face, you know. I mean, myself, I know. I don't know about other people. They don't want me to say what I'm saying. So let me go ahead to speak based on what we have on the screen. So what we have on our screen is, if you have anything, if you have been following us for a while now, and you have anything you want to share with us, be it a message that has blessed you, be it a transformation that has happened in your life as a result of this platform and this ministry, or you have something else, be it a prayer point, something you want us to join us, join you in the place of prayer, you could get to us by sharing that amazing information with us through our email, which is the transforming woman 2020 at gmail.com. Or you could actually write to us through the Facebook Messenger and someone will definitely respond to that message. But no, Kelly could not stop me from saying what I'm saying before she 
actually bumped in and put the information on the screen, if you look at my face and everything, you just know that I'm actually here to receive this money. Our dear sister, who is not a strange person, you guys have been seeing her almost all the time on this TTW of the screen, will be the one to bring us the word this morning. Sister Gladys, we welcome you. Thank you for accepting this responsibility to be a blessing to us this morning. So the stage is yours. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sister Marian. I really appreciate you. Thank you again for the privilege to be on your platform to share the word of God this morning. It is not by right. It's not a right for me, but it is a privilege. And I just want to bless God for your life. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. Um, since it's the morning of um the month the month of love we've been talking about love all through i just want to thank you guys for your love to this ministry ttw we are grateful and i also want to since my husband is going to be watching i want to appreciate my husband because if he didn't give me the permission i will not be here today um for him taking care of the kids for me to be here i just want to appreciate him and you know mm -hmm. say i love him for that Thank you. Thank you so much, baby. Thank you. Um, before we start this morning, I just want to say a quick word, a quick prayer. Sorry. Father, in the name of Jesus, the most gracious Father, we give you praise. The I am that I am, my first love. Thank you. Thank you for another privilege to be in your presence. Thank you for the privilege to share your word this morning. Oh, precious Lord, we ask that you come and have your way. Spirit of the living God, take absolute control. Mm -hmm. This morning, I just want to submit myself to you. Ask that you will use me just as a vessel. I am honored to be that vessel this morning. I ask that you use my mouth to deliver the message the way you have put in my heart. Spirit of God, I pray for all trans. I pray for empowerment and I pray for boldness this morning. I cover this platform this morning with the blood of Jesus. I cover everyone logging in with the blood of Jesus. I come against every distraction, every interference in the realm of the spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I pray that let the word come out today like light. Let it shine over us and let there be enlightenment in our minds. Amen. I pray that the word that will come out today will begin to break every wall of barrier in our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that our heart will be open. Let there be an entrance of our heart to this word this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I say thank you and I say take all the glory for everything. In Jesus' much less name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone, for joining us this morning. We are grateful once again. I'm sorry about my voice, a little bit of cold, but I'm just going to try as much as possible to deliver the message. So this morning, we're going to be talking, thank you, sister. We're going to be talking about um, sacrificial love. I was just meditating and asking the Lord, what do I talk about? I know we've been talking about love, all the types of love. Our sister Marian has, you know, done a fantastic job, you know, enumerating and, you know, elaborating on love. We talked about the different kinds of love and the Eros love, when we, talk, uh, we talked about it in our um, um, uh, ladies' sheets, uh, we talked about the filial love, brotherly love. She mentioned those ones. She talked about agape love, which is the ultimate of all, the love of God to us and our love to him. We talked about that one. And I was asking, God, what do I talk about? He said, talk about my love. Jesus told me, he said, talk about my love, the sacrificial love of Jesus Christ. And how can we use Jesus as a model in our lives today? How can we um, see what he did for us and also do it for one another? Hallelujah. So this morning, we're going to be talking about sacrificial love. Hallelujah. Um, so what is sacrificial love? I just wrote a few things that came. Say A love that transcends and persists regardless of circumstances. It is unconditional. A type of love that is demonstrated by action. That is love in action. For example, giving up your best or what is precious for someone else to have it. Something that is precious to you and you're giving it for, to someone else, not for your benefit, but for that person to benefit from it. Jesus Christ demonstrated this kind of love for humanity by dying on the cross for its sins. 
Now let's talk about Jesus a little bit. Before we go talk about ourselves, I want us to talk about Jesus. We know, let's go back to the foundation. We are here today because Jesus demonstrated that kind of love to us. We will not be here sitting and talking to one another. We will not be believers or born again. And for those that have not even given their life to Christ, you know, we are also admonishing that, you know, they will accept that love. And they will come over and join us in this kingdom where there is, you know, there is love, there is peace, there is everything that we need. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So this morning, let's talk about Jesus. The Bible's talked about, let's go back to Genesis. It talked about the fall of man, Adam. Adam disobeyed God, right? And then what, what happened? God, God had said it, when you sin, when you push off, you eat of this, um, this fruit or this tree, if you pluck the fruit and eat of it, you say that day you will die. And the moment Adam disobeyed through the wife Eve with this, the deception of the serpent, the Bible says there was a disconnection humanity was disconnected remember when god created he said let us make man in our own image and likeness the 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 the, the, the desire of god was to dwell with man to sit with man let us talk face to face have that communion with man that was why he created man god the father and the son the holy ghost they sat together and he made that 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 decision to create man and we talked about how god would come to the garden of eden and you know he would talk with um um, um Adam in the cool of the day and everything, but as soon as they disobeyed God, there was a disconnection. God could no longer be looking for Adam. Adam, where are you? Adam is far off. And he says, I have, you know, I'm hiding myself because I'm ashamed. I'm naked. And God, who told you you're naked? I don't want to go into that. But because of that, sin came into the world through Adam. It means that everyone that is born on earth you know, it's a, it's a product of sin. And now God says, you know what? Now that man has disobeyed me and disconnected, there is a way, there's something I have to do. He tried, he sent people, but they could not save the world. And Jesus himself, the true son of God says, I will come and save the world. I will take their place. Now let's look at the scenario. Let's look at man. Man is like a criminal. Let's say you committed murder. And the, the law says you have to be penalized. The only way to be penalized is for you to die, maybe by hanging or any other method. And now Jesus says, no, I don't want this person to die. I'm going to take the place of this man. I would rather die for this man so that this man can be set free. So he paid the price with his blood. He paid the ransom. What is a ransom? We know when you kidnap somebody, they ask for a ransom. They say, unless you bring that ransom, we can release this person. And when you bring that ransom, the ransom was the blood of Jesus. When Jesus presented the blood, he paid the price. And that is why we as children have to live for God. We know the popular um, scripture, John 3, 16. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There was just one criteria that God wanted us. He says, all I want is for you to believe me. Then that relationship will come back because there was that disconnect in the beginning. The only thing that acted as the propitiation for our sin was the blood of Jesus to atone the sins. And the Bible says, when Jesus presented the blood, that is where now the, that wall of separation, it was removed. And now we can come boldly to his throne because God had paid that price. It did not come cheap. I know people say salvation is free, but it was not free for, for to Jesus. It cost him a lot. It cost him his life. Now think about it that somebody dying for someone, somebody that deserves to die. And someone took their place and says, I am going to, you know, take your place and die for your sin. And sometimes we minimize it. You know, we have been saved. Yes, hallelujah. We are grateful. But it is important that sometimes we go back and look exactly what happened. When you begin to read the story of how Jesus was treated, you begin to weep. If you're somebody that you, you just put your shoe, he was spat on. He was beaten. Imagine you create something and now you have to come and submit yourself to your creation to kill you. Do you understand that kind of humility that God himself had to come in his majesty, putting himself as man 
to come and die for the sins of man. That is how important you are to him. That is how important that he sees you. Hallelujah. And let's look for another scripture. Um, Romans 5 verse 8. It says, but God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners, when we don't even know, when we were his enemies. That is why I'm talking about sacrificial love because it's not only a love that you give to someone that loves you back. Mm -hmm. It is a love that you're giving to somebody that does not even love you, don't care about you. Somebody that has hurt you and betrayed you. Somebody that has pierced you so deep and wounded you, but yet, you are required to show that love. The Bible said Jesus Christ demonstrated that love. That why we were still sinners, He died for us. The people that were beating Him and nailing Him on the cross, He was dying for them. But they did not know that. The people that were mocking Him and putting a crown of thorns over His head and taking, telling Him to carry the cross. Do you know He He was crucified between two criminals because in their in their custom, criminals they had to go and crucify them. The Bible says uh, uh, we have been redeemed because he says, curse is he that hangs on the cross. I, 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 I don't remember the scripture, but he said, curse is he that hangs. So he took the curse that was on humanity. He bore it and he went to the cross and he surrendered his life. And the Bible says, even at the cross, he was crying. Lord, Lord, why, Father, have, why have you forsaken me? God had to leave him because of the sins of the world, right? I don't want to talk much about that. When you look at Isaiah 53, verse 5, it says, but he was wounded. I didn't give you that, Kelly, but this morning I was just thinking about it. He said, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Isaiah 53, verse 5, he was wounded for our transgression. He didn't transgress. He didn't know. He didn't do anything. They say he that knew no sin. He that knew no sin. He was righteous, but yet he took on to man. What am I saying this morning? And I want us to look at it that if God died for me, what can I do for my brother? What can I do for those around me? Because God says, if you open the, uh, let's look at um, Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2, please. Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. It says, therefore, be imitators of God as dear children. He said, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice of God for a sweet smelling aroma. Hallelujah. If you can help me go to 1 John 3, 16 to 18. 1 John 3. Everything we are talking is in the word of God. These are not new stuff. 1 John 3, 16. It says, by this we know because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has these world's goods and sees his brother and in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word and in tongue or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. He said, if Jesus laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. Who is your brother? You and I. You are my brethren. Everyone that has been saved, we become brethren. It's no longer about blood. The Bible says, I think John, it says that anyone that believes, he gave them power to become the sons of God, not by the reason of man or blood or anything, but it was by the spirit of God. It was by the power of God. So we become brethren. The church, which is his body, we are all brethren. And God is saying us to us this morning that we also ought to lay down our life for one another means that no more are we looking at each other as strangers but we are looking at each other as this is my sister if my sister is in need i would gladly want to help my sister if my brother needs help i am gonna be there for my brother he says if example somebody comes for help and you can help them and you refuse to help, how can you say you love god that is not god you don't love god because you have to demonstrate remember i said it's love in action it is is demonstrated in action hallelujah mm -hmm. let's see first john 4 7 and 9 
7 to 9 and then 11. He said, Beloved, let, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. That's verse 11. We also ought to love one another. We have seen, I says, when you look at the same first John 4, 20, it says, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar, for he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must love his brother also. God is talking, I know we're talking about sacrificial love, but he's talking about the filial kind of love, the love for brothers, the love for sisters, sisters in Christ. I'm not talking about just family, but your sister and your brother in Christ. How can you say you love God where, whom you have not seen? But you cannot love somebody that is closer to you. God is admonishing us this day that we have to demonstrate that love to our brothers and sisters. And uh, uh, there's something I said, what is sacrificial love? How can we practice sacrificial love? There are some points that I was able to bring up. How do we practice sacrificial love? I said sacrificial love, it is not self-centered or selfish does not seek its own benefits. It is void of the mentality of I, me, and myself. It is void of that mentality. If you are a woman or a man, that all the time you're thinking about me, I, myself, there is a problem. It means that you are not practicing sacrificial love. The Bible says in Philippians 2, 3 to 4, if you look at Philippians 2, 3 to 4, it says, let nothing, be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. God is saying that we should esteem ourselves lesser than, it means that if I look at you, I have to see that you're even better than me. Like you, you know, not you know, not that you're putting yourself down, but that is what the Bible is. It means that don't only look at yourself up there, but know that your brother is even better. It, you know, so you humble yourself and you know that oh, I have to love my brother in this way. I have to show love. Love that is not selfish. Love that is not self-centered. I'm not thinking only about myself, but I'm thinking for the body of Christ alike. Jesus, Jesus left the earth, right? I mean, he's here because he brought his spirit here. But the Bible says he, he still practices sacrifice. You know, that, you know that though he's on his throne, but the Bible says he still intercedes. He's still praying for us. Means that he's still at work. He's still praying and interceding for us. And when, when God, you know, something's going to have you, Lord, Lord, this is my child. And you're thinking, I cannot pray, but oh my God, I missed that accident. You did not know that maybe Jesus was interceding for you and say, no, this thing cannot touch my daughter. This thing cannot touch. Maybe the enemy meant something and God averted it because he still interceded. Even though he paid the price, even though he gave up his blood, he gave his life for you and I, but he's still interceding for us wherever he is, even on his throne. That is selfless love. That is love that is not selfish. That is not self-centered. When, you, you know, can you be that man or woman where somebody can rely on you? That if they call you, no matter the time, you can get up and say, sister, I've got you. Brother, I've got you. Let us pray. You know, what is going on? Not only prayer, but you know, oh, do you need something? Are you hungry? Oh, I can offer you food. Oh, I can do this. Oh, I saw my brother fell. Oh, maybe he fell into sin. I don't take his name and go on social media and broadcast it. And I say, brother, you know, we are, we are, we, you know, we are humans and these things happen. Hey, you know, you can still get up from this because the Bible told me that the righteous fall at seven times and they rise up. The Bible told me, so I cannot judge you because guess what? The Bible says, take heed because you think that you stand. Take heed. 
it means that I can help you. Let's pray about this. Oh, do you have a sin, a sin of loss that you cannot? Let us pray about this and let God remove this thing from you. I'm not going to put you out there into the world, into the to unbelievers, into the public and broadcast your name. How dare you call yourself a man of God, a woman of God? Eh? Look at this person did this and did that. No, no, no. This is not the love that Jesus wants from us. I'm talking to the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Every part of his body, Jesus is the head. And then all the entire body is us. And everyone in the body of Christ is important. We are unique because everything, just look at your body. Everything that God formed in your body has a purpose. Everything. There's nothing as 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 little as your eyebrows. Well, what we, we shave it off, right? <laughs> we take off the eyebrow to look enough for aesthetic and the, the eyelash it is important because guess what many scientists will say it traps dirt dirt from entering or dust from entering your eyes so it is important that even so you don't look at the the, the eyebrow and say i'm going to take you out you know i'm just going to clean you because you're useless in this body or you look at your ears i'm going to cut this ear or you know your hands or if you are the finger and god has if you have nails you're supposed to like you know, sometimes you have itchy, right? You scratch yourself and you, you make, you want to look, you scratch yourself. But instead of sometimes we take the nails that are grown and we begin to pop people in it and begin to hurt. If you take your long nails and begin to scratch yourself, guess what? It's going to bleed. And that is what we are doing in the body of Christ. People are bleeding because we are poking each other. Because we are fighting each other. How can we say we love our bread? What what kind of love are we showing to brothers and sisters that we hate each other and we are showing the world and the world already know oh Christian what do we want to hear about you say oh Christian mm, that those ones because if ourselves can come and say ourselves in the public oh, we can my 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 there's a say oh my grandmother she said don't wash your dirty linen in public because guess what those people will be laughing even when you wash it after you finish there you realize yourself but guess what it will never come out of the mind of those people. Look, let's let's look at we are in a kingdom. You don't you don't just get up and sell your kingdom and begin to release secrets in your kingdom anyhow. And you go out there, you 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 know, backbiting and tarnishing your but some people they are preaching is about people, men of God. It is is it your duty? It is not your duty. Do preach Jesus, do your thing and show love. Why do we fight it anytime we see even into oh these Christians, oh Christians are like this? Give us a break. No, see, no one has reached there yet. All of us are working towards that. And every day, and that is the, the thing is that when you begin to point, the Bible says, while you're trying to remove the lock from some, you know, a, a, a piece of wood from somebody's eyes, look at the lock in your eye. It means that look at yourself, know that without the sacrifice of Jesus, I am nothing. So love, Sacrificial love is not self-centered. It is not selfish. It is for you to put yourself out there for someone. Hallelujah. Let's look at the second thing. It is forgiving, patient, and kind. You, are for, you forgive even if you are right. You forgive your enemies and treat them kindly. If someone hurts you in the past and comes back to you for help, can you help them without bearing grudges? Can we do that? And this is sacrificial love. When somebody has hurt you, it is paining. It, you know, it pains you, right? But now the person come like, you know, can you do this for me? And then you'll be looking at it like, hmm, why, why are you coming to me? What, you know? I'm sort of all heard about what you do, but God is telling us that we still have to have. He says we should, if our enemy is hungry, right? Feed them. If they are thirsty, give them water, right? It's like your zombie coals, coals of fire upon them on their head. So do what you have to do because even though you are we were enemies to God, He still came and died for us. So it is a love that is forgiving. I want us to look at some two people this morning. Let's look at Abraham and Lot. Genesis 13, 8 to 11. But before you put that in, I'm going to talk in about Abraham and Lot, right? But let me give you a quick um, background of how these two people got connected and they were working together. This is the Old Testament. So let's go back to Genesis. 
The Bible talks about Abraham. God called him out of his country. The Bible says um, Abraham's father was Terah. Terah had three sons, Abraham, you know, Nahor, and Haran. Haran had a son whose name was Lot. Haran was the last one. He had a son whose name was Lot, but Haran died. Haran died in, 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 in awe. They call it a child. Yeah, that's where they were before they moved. So as Haran died, you know, now one day Terah woke up and said, you know what? I got to move. So he left. He said he was going to Canaan. And the Bible says he took Abraham and his wife Sarai, which before the name changed. And then he took um, Lot, the grandson. So they went to Haran. So he was going to Canaan, but he settled in Haran halfway. Haran, you know, he settled that, but that's another story. Let's not go to that. But he settled that. And then he died there. Terah died there. Now Abraham, everything is on his shoulder. Now he, he was 75 years old, years old. And God called him that go to Canaan, to a land that I will give you. He promised him to, you know, to, to bless him with the land. So Abraham now, he says, take your family, leave your, leave your family, leave your country and go to a land of bless you. So Abraham now took his wife, Sarah, and then also grabbed Lot. Lot was the nephew and he took Lot. And I'm sure Lot was still little because remember he was his junior brother's son. So I'm thinking that Lot was still little and with the heart, he didn't want to leave the, you know, the poor boy behind. So he took Lot and they came to Canaan. And, you know, they were always migrating and moving, journeying, you know, go to Egypt, come back. So when they journey, wherever they go, they will acquire slaves, acquire things and everything. Kelly, you can put the scripture up. They will acquire slaves and all that. Genesis 13, 8. And they had acquired so many things, right? And now they began to fight. Lord's men and Abraham's men, they began to fight because of the land. So Genesis 13, 8 to 11 says, So Abraham said to Lord, please, let there be no strife between you and me. And between my headsmen and your headsmen, for we are brethren, is not the whole land before you. Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. And if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Let's go to Genesis um, 14. Sorry. Okay, it says, they also, Lord took they also took Lot. Okay, Kelly, you can take that out. Let's, let me explain that because we have skipped, so you might not understand to get the correlation. So now they acquired stuff and everything. And Abraham said, separate for me, you know. We know what happened. Lot opened his eyes, you know, wide. And look at the valley. It was so green. Look at the, the, the Jordan, the, the valley near to Sodom. And everything was green. Ah, the man became greedy. And he took everything to himself. He said, ah, this is what I've been looking for. He did not even think about his uncle, the man that took him from Haran, the man that has been there for him, the man that has been taking good care of him, that even called him his son. He didn't look. He took everything, the most fertile place. He took it all. He didn't think about it, right? We do sometimes like that. You say, ah, these people are greedy, and you're coming back. And now he left. Now let's just look at it. He left. And Abraham now stayed on where God said he should stay. But God still blessed him because guess what? The blessing is not about the land. The blessing is inside. It's inside. So it's not about the land. So even if, as long as the blessing is inside, God can make a barren ground to become fertile. Hallelujah. So anyways, Lord left. And then we talked about, before we get to the next verse, I want to talk about how Abraham had to go rescue Lot. Abraham, Lord has left and took his family and went with it. And then they see the kings of the Sodom where they, where they, they had war. And in that war and everything happened, they defeated the kings. And guess what? They took Lot with them, carried him, kidnapped him, took all his you know, cargo and everything and went with it. And then somebody came, rushed to tell Abraham, this is where I'm um, going now. Genesis 14. Genesis 14, 12. It says they also took Lot and Abraham's son, Abraham's um, brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. Then one who had escaped came and told Abraham the Hebrew, for he dwelt by the terebinth trees of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eschol and brother of Anna, and they were allies with Abraham. Now, when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his 318 trained servants who were born in his own house and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Hallelujah. The Bible says, as soon as he heard. Now, somebody would like say, 
this boy, this greedy boy, this rebellious boy, this boy that I took care of, now he took every fine, fine thing. He took the fine land and he left. Now he wants to come. Now he wants me to go and help. Why should I help him? Why should I help him? In fact, that serves him right. You see, that's a normal thing. Somebody, because you're, you're still angry about it, but that serves him right. If I let them kill him, save them. Then he will, he will learn his lesson, right? We do those things. Sometimes we do those things, but that is not what God is required. And the Bible said, as soon as he heard, as soon as he heard that they had captured his nephew, immediately he took his own servants, his soldiers and everything. And he went, if you look at him, rescued lots. He rescued all his goods, everything. He rescued and he gave back everything to him. Then he came. I didn't hear where the Lord come and say, I'm sorry, you, or forgive me for what I did, or, you know, thank you for rescuing me. We did not see that one. The Bible did that. Some people would say, ah, these people are ungrateful. <laughs> these people are ungrateful. And then he came back, right? <laughs> now, Abraham did a second thing. Now, when we look at Genesis 19, this is not like after Genesis 14. That's like how many chapters? I mean, everybody has gone their way and everything. And something happened again. <laughs> and he says, and he came to, okay, I'm not going to, no, don't put that yet because that's the, the last thing I'll put. So he says, something happened. God came to visit, like the angels came to visit Abraham. And they told, he said, oh, you know, I cannot go without telling my servant. You know, I think the heart of Abraham is like, that's why God said he was a friend of God because he mimics the way God does things to us without even looking at our sin or anything, right? So the Bible says they came to visit and they promised him that they were going to give him an heir and all that. And then he said, oh, I can't live without telling Abraham my secret. That is one thing that happened. When you have that communion with God, he begins to release secrets to you. Secrets about your family, secrets about those around you, things that people did not know. He shows you a way ahead of time. Why did he show Abraham? He knew that Abraham has the heart, the heart to interpret that seat. They had to pray for his brother, even though his brother never, never was ungrateful and never even re recognized that Abraham did anything. But he knew who Abraham was. He knew his heart. And he says, I can trust this person with a secret I'm telling this person. And he told Abraham. And yes, see Abraham, he was not even looking. And that's the funniest part. Abraham did not even look at just his lot he started interceding for the whole of Sodom. The people that were wicked, wicked. And some of us, when we see unbelievers, we judge. Ah, this one, mm, look at this one, the way he is. Look at this one, he says, gay what? He's gonna die. He's gonna die. Ah, and God is like, you should have the heart of your father. Who is your father? Because when, when you have the heart of God, when you see people dying in sin, you begin to weep, you cry. The Bible says Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He looked at it, he said, these people, they rejected him. He wept. Ah, he wept. He said, you can't even recognize your prophet. You can't even recognize the Savior that is sent to you. You can't recognize. He said, the day you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And then that's the day you have your service. But they did not. But Jesus still died, right? That is sacrificial love. Anyways, let's go back to Abraham. Abraham began to intercede. We know how he would talk about if there are 50 righteous people, Lord, will you still destroy? Lord said, eh. God said, I will not destroy. He come, okay, 45, 30. He, he just kept bringing it down. 10. If I go to 10, God said, even at 10, I will not destroy. The man was like, so there are not, not 10 people. But God knew that this man was interceding for his for a lot as well. Because he knew Lot was in that place. He did not want Lot to perish with the wicked. And the Bible said, now let's look at Genesis 19. 29. It says, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, where he overthrew the cities which Lord had dwelt. Hallelujah. So somebody might say, oh, okay, because maybe Lord was righteous, that's why uh, God did, uh, come and save him. Not lie. That's not true. It's because Abraham was interceding for Lot. Abraham was crying out that Lot cannot perish with the wicked. And the Bible said, because God remembered Lot, and sorry, Abraham, then he also remembered Lot. Because while Lot was connected to Abraham, there was prayer, there was something, there was a, a pleading that has gone on. And God, the Bible said, God took Lot, and we know how he was saved out of that place. 
where he did not die with he and his family. Now, this is the love I talk about forgiving. Love that is forgiving. Love that is kind. Love that does not bear grudges. Love that is patient. Abraham had that heart. Though this man, in, in, in our own human eyes, we look at it and say, oh, this man really wounded Abraham. You know, this man, this. But the Bible says all things work together for the good of them that love us, you know, love God and accord according to his purpose, right? So Abraham knew that, listen, God, my eyes was focused on God. It was not about man. Some of us, we focus our eyes on our brother. We want our brother to save us. Even family, we are looking for somebody to save us so much that when they don't, they fail. They are humans and they fail. They will begin to hold them. Sorry. We begin to hold grudges, right? Because now they have failed. But for God, for, we forget that God is not calling us to look unto them for to be our savior. They are not our savior. If they, what they can do, maybe somebody did something what they could do, right? But now let's look at ourselves. Like we ask, what have I done for someone as well? What 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 can I can I be that person that people can trust and run to and I can help them? Or oh, I'm just a person that take, take, take. Some people like to take. Oh, even small prayer, they can pray. Every day, pray for me, pray for me. But they cannot pray for somebody else. Oh, something is happening. I don't care. You know, after all, it doesn't affect me. I don't care. Let me tell something. And you run to the pastors. These pastors, too, they have tried. Sometimes we go to pray, 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 pray for me. And the, the man is busy suffering in his house. In his house, he's suffering with the family, but he can't talk because now we look at them as Jesus, looking at them as, as God. But they are not. They are humans, right? They have their own issues that are going on. And God is saying, we are brethren. We look out for each other. We take care of each other. We are forgiving. And this is for someone. If you have been holding somebody for in grudges for too long, let it go. Let it go. It's high time we let go of those things because it no longer serves the purpose of God. And God is saying, if I can, if you can look back at what I did for you on the cross of Calvary, is that not something that can tell you that because I've been merciful to you, you can show your brother mercy? Because I had compassion on you and you can also show somebody compassion. What, what, how can we say we, we know God and we become wicked to one another? We know God and we begin to backbite one another. We say we love God and yet we cannot reach out our you know, helping hand to someone that we say we love. So sacrificial love is forgiving. You forgive the people. And let me tell you a quick story, right? You know, I like to bring my own small, small story the way I work with God anyways. So I remember one day <laughs> I was driving and somebody, because this somebody that had hurt me so much in my past. And I don't know. I didn't know that that thing was still in there. Sometimes you think you forgive people, but just until they touch you, and then ah, the thing begins to well up. And then they reach out to me, and this person was in serious condition, like had to 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 go to the hospital. And now they are reaching out to me that they need money. See me too. I'm like, hmm. See, where well, you did not even care about. Look at you. How dare you come and ask money from me? That's how I was talking in my car. How dare you come and ask money from me? Now when you were doing that, you didn't think that I could do this. Ah. I had the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, give that money. <laughs> I was like, no. He says, I want you to give the money to the person. And that, he said, that is how I show my love to you. He said, there are things that you didn't, you know, you you guys hurt me or something. Things that you were enemies and God still did it for you. And he told me, he said, I want you to enumerate the, the love of God, to, 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 to imitate, sorry, the love of God. I want you to release that money. Hi. It was painful. I was taking it out and I was crying. I was like, this, but I just wanted to show him small pepper, small like this, let him, you know, let him let him listen. But he didn't have, <laughs> I had to submit to God and I gave it, right? And I, and I remember some, another story. And so I know that this person was just using, oh, anytime they have problems, they'll run to you. Can I have money? Anytime. And you know that this person, that just you, I don't know, you always come when you need something. And I was just fed up. I was fed up with it. I'm like, what is it? I remember I was sitting down to eat. <laughs> And I was like, the person was like, can I just have this? Ah, I was like, I just had a grumbling. And my husband was like, give the money now. I was one of those people, hey, give the money. I said, for what? Why should I give the money? What? And I heard the Holy Spirit says, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. I was like, oh God. <laughs> I was like, I couldn't do it. I said, I couldn't. I said, ah, for you too. I said, okay, I release the money. You see, those that those, I'm just bringing all these examples to show that, yes, it's difficult. We don't want to do it, but we have to obey the word of God. We have to practice that sacrificial love. There are times that God has asked me to ask for forgiveness for something I didn't do. 
It is painful. I remember somebody hurt me so bad and God says, I want you to go and apologize to them. And I was like, that this person is the one that hurts me. They should apologize to me. So I was putting my shoulder like, okay, I'm right. You know, they should apologize. And I, went, I remember the day I went and, and the person was just accusing me, accusing me, talking, you did it, you did that, you did that. And I was like, I wanted to open my mouth to defend myself. And the Lord told me, he said, keep quiet. He said, close it, zip your mouth. And I was like, God, but this person, what they are saying is wrong, you know? They didn't do this, I didn't know. And God was like, did I do anything? When they were spitting on me, beating me, did I do anything? I was like, he said, when I was carrying the cross, when they spat on me, the Bible said he was sad. He didn't say a word. He said, I did not say a word. They were beating me. I didn't say a word. Did I do anything? And I kept quiet. See how my flesh was screaming. In fact, for like two days, I couldn't recover from it because my flesh was so active. And sometimes this flesh needs to die because the flesh that is enmity to God. This flesh is the enemy to God's word. When God is saying, I want you to, you have to die to that flesh. The Bible says, if any man should come after me, he says he must carry his cross, deny himself. Anyone that seeks to save their life, it will, their life, it will lose their life. But anyone that loses their life for my sake, they will save it. What do you mean? God is not saying that go and kill yourself. He's saying, you see, this is your flesh. The way you used to do things. God has translated us into the kingdom of God. We are new creation for crying out loud. It means that you don't go back to the old man. You don't do the thing like the old man. When the world is saying that, oh, I will pay evil by evil for evil, a tooth for tooth, I will revenge. So my we like to revenge. When they want to talk, ah, let me just remove this Christian thing and put it one side. Let me come and tell these people my mind. Let me, you know, we need to do better. We need to do better. When, maybe when you're in the house, some day, sometimes <laughs> I'm bringing myself because in the house, my husband, we can be saying something and I'll talk, 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 talk. <laughs> and the only be like, close 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 i won't close because i want to make my points known this person must hear me this person must... but now i'm learning it's you know gradually i'm learning i'm like it's not everything i must talk even though even if i'm the person on the right sometimes you have to mellow down for the sake of peace love i'm that, that's why i'm gonna go now it is a love that seeks peace and not discord sacrificial love it seeks peace and not discord it is not because i am right or i'm wrong that i must scatter everything no i can be quiet i can be silent for the sake of peace and paul said if it is possible be at peace with all men he did not say only the brethren or all men whether in the world or whatever all men if it is possible me that try your utmost best try your best to be at peace. Don't be a quarrelsome person. Don't be a person that, you know, anytime they talk, you want to defend your own, you know, mm -mm. God is saying that we should try to be at peace. And that is sacrificial love because it, 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 you don't feel like it. You want to defend yourself. I just said, it. you want to defend yourself. You feel that you are right. But because of the sake of peace, there are something he says, say all things are, um, Something like all things are lawful, but not all things. Sometimes it's not every time you must say something. Sometimes we go and begin to, even us in the body, let's see, let's say this is my hand, right? And I begin to slap, slap, slap my jaw. Like I'm like, you know, this jaw, you're too fat. You're too fat. <laughs> I begin to, you're too fat, you're too fat. <laughs> the jaw is going to get red. It's going to get red because now you're, you're bringing some more pressure. It's going to get red and then it gets swollen. And then you yourself begin to feel the pain, right? Maybe you want to go and get some talent or because now you're feeling the pain. You did not know that you were hurting, <laughs> hurting yourself. So as a body of Christ, you don't begin to, you know, hit. I said it again. We don't poke, poke, poke each other. When you look military, military people, right? When they go to war, when they go to war, right? What happened is that when a soldier, a soldier falls or is wounded, they don't leave the soldier to the enemy. They take the soldier, they go to the back, they turn to the soldier. Somebody covers, they turn to the soldier. And even if they, that's why you see veterans now, God bless them. Some people come with amputated legs and hands. If somebody had left them in the battlefield, that when they were shot, they would have been dead. But they did not leave them in the battlefield. They took the soldier, they took them under covering, and the people gave their life, protecting them. If my brother is down today, I have to 
cover my brother. I have to cover. Yes, we will rebuke righteously in love, but do it in a loving way. Do it inside of us. I can tell my sister, hey, sister, this thing you're doing is wrong. But listen, you know, you can change if you want. You know, God has given you that grace. You can, you know, in a way that is loving, not to come and say, hey, hey, look at you. How dare you call yourself Christian? How dare you do this? Eh, this is the, uh -uh. that is not the right way. That is not what God wants from us. It means that if our one of us is fallen, we need to hold the hand to rise down, to put that person back up. If my leg is hurting me, I have to do everything to make sure that that leg is do is is doing well. If my toe, because guess what? If my leg is hurting me, I'm feeling the pain. My entire body has to feel that pain. My entire body, and God is saying that in the body of Christ, that is what we're supposed to do. If a sister is in pain, I have to be in pain. Because guess what? She's part of that body. He's part of that body. And if he's in pain, if they hurt, they hurt. That is Jesus. He feels our pain when we are in pain. Why can't we feel each other's pain? When we are pain, we have to show that love. We have to bring peace and not discord, not fighting each other, going out there and tearing the people's name and speaking and this. Sometimes let God be the judge and do the things, you know. And the word of God and love is already a rebuke for us. Yes, God loves us, he rebukes us, but do it in a loving way, not in a way that would tear down, the, you know, the church. Not in a way, so my we are crying that the enemy is fighting or the enemy is fighting the church. No, we are the ones tearing ourselves inside. It's not the enemy. The enemy is not stronger than us. It's, the, it's we that we are tearing each other from within. From within. If you, you know you have organs, there are some diseases that come and they begin to eat you from within. And before you know it, the whole body is affected. The whole body is affected and there is a decay. So we have to learn not to fight each other, drop people's throat and everything. Be peaceful. Peaceful one another. That is sacrificial love. It is peace. It is peace. Making peace. Yeah, but there's a scripture that, uh, uh, I don't know, there's that scripture. He says, if someone uh, uh, sin against you, if you go to offer your offering. In fact, you remember that they have a problem with you. No, you have a problem with them. They. It means that they are the one that is giving you problem. You leave that offering there. Don't give it to me yet. Go back and make peace. I think that's Matthew. Go back and make peace with your brother before you come and give me that offering. He says, if your brother, this is Kelly, if you can look at that scripture, if your brother is sin against you and come back to you and says, I'm sorry, brother, you have to take them. And they were like, this example were like, I bet how many times are we going to forgive our brother? He says, 70 times. It means that no matter how many times they come and say, I am sorry, you have to take them back. Don't say, and some of we say, ah, this one showed me the, the last time. Mm, I will never, this, in fact, I cut the person. We like to cut people off, right? I cut you out of my life, out, out, you know? Just cutting people left and right. Rather than some people that we have to hold them with love and compassion. There are some people that don't even, they don't know that this is what they are doing. They don't even know that they are, that's, that's what they're doing. They say, the Bible says, love covers a multitude of sin. Love covers. Love does not expose your 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 weaknesses, you know, for 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 people to laugh at you and mock you and do all those things. No, love begins to cover you, and love begins to say, "I got you." You know, I understand. You know, I I, I have my own weaknesses. You know, let us pray together. Let us let us seek God for help that this thing, you know, can go away from you and all that. You know, I still love you regardless of who you are. I still love you, even though without your character. As well, I don't like the character, but I still love you. Even in that, your weakness, I still love you, and I can still show it to you. Yeah, that's Matthew 5, 23. Thank you. He says, therefore, if you're offering your gift to the altar, and remember that your brother or your sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and reconcile to them, and then come and offer your gift. Hallelujah. The next thing I'm going to talk about, sacrificial love is a love for service, serving one another. I know I've been talking a lot of things, but it's still a law. You know, you serve, you serve, serve one another, serve God, serve mankind. Mark 10, 45 says, if for even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life a ransom for many. Even the Son of Man did not come to serve, right? And then when you look at Philippians, Philippians 2 verse 6 to 8, he said, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. That was Jesus. He humbled himself to come and serve. He said, though I am God, he took out the divinity. He said, let me take humanity. Let me take the form of humanity. Let me come down. Let me serve these people. Let me show them an example that they can model. And God is saying that be a woman, a man that serves other people. Not because, don't serve somebody because you want them to, you know. Some people serve because they want to get something. But serve because you love God serve God in the house of God. We talk about genuine service the other time. It was last year. We spoke about service. Occupy till I come, right? I don't want to go much in it, but you can go back to our videos on YouTube. And please, like and share. That is also love. You see, when we come and put the message like that, Sister Maria, when she come and give this fire, fire messages, it needs to go. All you do is, sh is share now, share, click the button, share, and like it. We have been crying out and saying, hey, so that many people can, you know, can not, not because want to show, no, but the message needs to go out. That people can hear that. That is another form of love. You know, show us that love, please. Okay. So the Bible says Jesus himself, right? He came in that form. He put put that form of man and served. We, we saw how he was serving his disciples, washing their feet. He told them, Peter was like, no, 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 don't wash my feet. I was like, shut up. Just let me do what I'm doing right now because I'm just showing an example, right? And, you know, Peter is always blabbing and talking, even when he don't even think before talking. But God was like, no, I'm showing you that example. Just wait. And he washed their feet, he washed their feet. He was even washing the feet of the person to betray him. Can you imagine? He was washing Judas. He knew Judas would betray him. Some of us, hey, God has shown me this witch, you go die today. What? What? I will be firing prayer. Shaka, papa, papa, will be eh? breathing down brimstone and war upon them. Ha! <laughs> the Bible says he knew Judas. Judas was going to betray him in a moment. And he bent down, he bent down, washed the feet of Judas, wiped it. And he told them, he said, as I have done this, you ought to do it for the brethren. It means that do it for one another. Humble. He says, if any man, because they asking, who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? God said, in this kingdom, you know, in the world, people can say the greater is somebody that sit, sit down, people are serving them. The king, somebody just sitting. But in this kingdom of God, the greatest is the person that goes down and serves others. The greatest is the person that serves. It's not who that sits on the high chair. Even God was saying, say, when you go to one place, <laughs> they don't want to disgrace yourself. You come carry yourself, go sit in front, and they come and tell you, <laughs> go back, go back. <laughs> he says, sit down in the low place, and then they can upgrade you. Let them upgrade you. God is saying, when you begin to serve, that is where I am elevating you. Elevation comes in your service. Service to God. Tomorrow we go to church and we stand like a pole. And they are praying and, and they're worshiping God. And we don't even do it. We don't like you can lift up your holy hands. You cannot do you see you, you see the, um you go to church and you see the paper on the floor. You're waiting for, for the sweepers to come and sweep it. Just bend down and take it out. You you have you should go to the house of God, look around. What, what needs to be done? Hey, this place is dusty. Let me wipe it. Oh, I went to the bathroom. Oh, the bathroom was untidy. Let me tidy it. You are not waiting for anybody to come and do it because nobody is gonna nobody should be doing it. You should be doing it. If God made your eyes to see it, then God is saying you do something about it. So we learn to serve each other. Husband and wife serving each other. And you know, mother, father, um, you know, sons and daughters serving each other, serving my brothers, serving my sisters, making sure are you okay, being comfortable, you know, being hospitable to people. Hallelujah. The last thing I'm gonna talk because of my time. Yes, I have a few minutes. The last thing it's a love that gives. Love is giving. Sacrificial love 
you must give. You cannot say you don't give. And you're not giving any kind of thing. It's a giving that is painful. Sacrificial, something that is sacrificial. So man talked about, I think, giving last year. Giving. You know, you have to go way out to give somebody that is tangible, something that is precious to you. Don't look for your 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 own your used stuff, stuff that you don't need them. If I want to go and charge you, then you begin to give. If you come to my house and I look at my best clothes and I say, Oh, this one will look good on you. Though I love it, I can say, take it. Yeah. I take it. That is sacrificial because it is painful to me because I'm taking this thing. It costs me a lot. And I still love this thing, but I want to give my sister because I want my sister to look good. Not that I will look for the rats, the ones that don't need it no more. And I say, take it. And God is saying, look for a law because sacrificial. David says, I will not give God anything that does not cost me. I don't want free things. So when we are one, one dollar, one, one dollar from Genesis to Revelation from 20, in fact, 10 years ago, so they give me one dollar for offering. We are still doing it. We're not talking about all the money, right? But your giving, it shows your level of love. Your giving shows whether you're sacrificial or not. I'm not saying give what you don't have. Give what you have. Like the, 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 the widow's might. She gave everything. She did not have, but she gave everything. And God, Jesus looked at her and said, this woman has given more than you or you out of the abundance of your wealth. You've given little, little. But this woman gave everything that she had. So God is admonishing that we give, right? The Bible says in the um, John 15, 13, it says, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down this life for his friends. We have talked about that a lot. And then the, let's look at the John 10, 17 to 18. It says, therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. The, this command I have received from my father. I mean that he came and gave his life. Nobody forced him to give it. Giving should not be forced. He gave it willingly. It should be a willing act. That is sacrificial love. You're giving it will. Don't give it to be grudges. Or, you know, you're giving God, eh, I, you know, this money, anytime, the pastor, money, 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 anytime, this. I don't know. God doesn't accept those. He doesn't accept that kind of sacrifice. So, sacrificial love is given willingly he laid down his life willingly god did not force him to jesus you more lead. he gave he gave his life hallelujah so with everything that we have said today because of our time we're going to round up today with everything that we have said today about sacrificial love all these things we are talking about is for god to check ourselves and begin to check those areas that we have not practiced sacrificial love and begin to see how we can adjust with the help of the holy spirit you see how we can adjust it how can we show that love and i want to give an opportunity to somebody that is you know still in the world and has not accepted jesus and but jesus lay a sacrificial love for you why are you are if I right now the sacrifice is already there. He's just waiting for you to say, yes, sir. He's just waiting for you to say, Lord, I accept you. He said, if thou would believe in your heart and confess in with your mouth, then thou shalt be saved. Romans 10, 10, 9 and 10. You will be saved if you will believe in your heart. All God wants you to do is believe and say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me your Lord over my life. You know, I accept that you died on the cross of Calvary before me. You say, and you, you say, from today onwards, fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to walk in the path of righteousness. As soon as you accept that, that is all you need. Jesus has already done the sacrifice for you. All you need is that. So for someone that has not given their life, I admonish you, commit your life to God today and ask God to come into your heart and ask God to, serve, to, to save you from your sin. Repent of your, 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 your sins and ask God to save you so that he can show you what it means to love. Sometimes you're running around looking for love, but God is saying the real deal is in the kingdom. The real love is in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. That was powerful. God bless you. You know, um, while you were preaching about this love, uh, one thing that I want us to realize is as 
especially as women, we keep uh, asking God for things like we want to get married, we want to have a child, we want to get rich, we want to have this job, this and that. But there are certain things in life that we are not paying attention to. And those things is these children that we're asking for, what will become of these children? What are we doing today to make way for these children to, 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 to have the best out of life? What is it that we are doing today? What changes are we making in the society today that these children that when they come in, they will meet a society that was better than what we had? I am saying it from the perspective of building Christ. But let me not get ahead of myself. This is the mindset in which we are going to use to pray today. Let's start with praying for our nation that I want us to look at uh, uh, this analogy. What, during the Super Bowl, there was a problem that came up over uh, the internet over an advert that was supposed to illustrate Jesus Christ. Because there's this group of people that they, they were doing an advert and the advert was supposed to illustrate Jesus Christ. And people were, were, were talking against that advert because it mentioned Jesus Christ. It made me to see how the society in which we live in today is. is that kind of society that they are fighting against the things of God. They are fighting against uh, uh, what Christ represents. And if they are fighting Christ today, the children, our children, or, or, or our children's children, what will become of them? Are they even going to know Christ? Are they even going to, to, to look, uh, to sit like that and pray? Or are they going to follow the rules and the, 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 the laws that are being implemented today? That is what seems to be the most important. Oh no, you have to respect this person because this person is not, uh, 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 is an atheist. So don't force it on them. We're not forcing it on you, but don't, don't force yours on, our, on us as well that we have to stand our ground. And what I'm saying now is I want us to pray that for every person that is living on this planet earth today, for the light of God to begin to shine through them. Because if we, like our sister was praying yesterday, if we can, 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 can do something, just like Hashem was giving the analogy of Abraham yesterday, that Abraham had to do something in his secret place that caused us to benefit of this blessing today, to know God today, to be able to pray and still think of him and say, this is what Abraham did. This is the kind of faith Abraham had. It's because that is the kind of thing that we want, we in this gen present generation have to rise up to. We have to rise up to our calling. We have to rise up to our purpose. We have to rise up to that which we have to do to play our role necessary to lay a solid foundation that our children and children's children, that when they come up, they will know that there was a God. There is still a God and there will forever be a God upon the nation. What I'm praying for us, I want us to pray, is for us to pray for a massive revival, for a massive light to fall upon the children of God, that they will begin to arise to their calling upon in every nation. Their calling, it may not just to preach, be to preach the word of God. It might just be able for you to be able to do right, to be able to love on people properly, for you to be able to be sacrificial in your love, for you to be able to, 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 to do what is right for your nation. In fact, let us pray for Nigeria. Let us pray for America. Let us just go and just oh heavenly father daddy we pray this day that may there be a massive revival upon the earth we cannot live in the earth oh father without you we cannot live in a society where you do not exist we are here oh lord to keep your name going we are here oh lord to shine your light to shine your glory and so lord we pray lord for the activity activation of your sons and daughters into their duties, into their callings, into their purpose, oh Lord, that they may begin to arise to do what is right. May they begin to arise to walk in love. May they begin to arise to be more sacrificial in their ways, not to be selfish in themselves, but begin to see the needs of people, begin to call on to the needs of people, to prepare a world, to prepare a way for the generations upon the generations to come. We do not want a world, oh Lord, that is infested with, 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 with ideas that do not represent you. The same thing that you had condemned in times before. The same thing that you have destroyed nations for times before. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are here in America, especially, oh Father, for a purpose. I know for sure that you sent me upon this land, oh Lord, not just because you wanted to prosper my life, oh Father, but because I had a purpose. I had a bigger purpose. I had something much bigger for your kingdom's sake. And so, Lord, I am praying in the name of Jesus Christ for the activation, activation 
generations of a revival in the hearts of your children that they will begin to arrive and begin to change the world. They will begin to arrive and be, arrive and begin to change our nation for the good, for your good, for the glory of your name, for the for your name to stand in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. That we we want to create a society that represents you. We want to live a lot a, 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 a legacy that stays God walk on earth. God created the earth, and God is still on this earth. The devil did not win. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we pray, oh Lord, may you activate your children. May you instill in them a new passion. May you instill in them a new love for you. May you instill in them a new vision in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will begin to arise one to each other according to their purpose, playing their role diligently, passionately, with a, with a, with a, with a zeal or lot that is so persistent and focused that no matter what, it will not push them. Nothing will pull them down in the name of Jesus Christ. We will leave a legacy of you, O oh Lord, upon this earth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. I want us to pray for every woman who is expecting uh, God to bless them with their own spouse. You know, most of the time, uh, God, we are praying for things and we don't know why God hasn't answered us yet. It's probably because we have not really amassed the, the, the requirements needed for us to, 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 to take up this blessing. Uh, 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 I watched one of Priscilla's preachings the other day, and she gave an analogy. She said there was a baby, and she 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 was like two years old. So she will just go walk up to the fridge, and she calls it a big box, and she will point onto it when she's hungry. She point onto it and say, "Eat." So she met her dad and pulled her dad towards the fridge, a point pointed to the fridge and said, "Eat." The dad said, "Okay." The dad took her put her on the table for her to sit so that he can go get the food for her to eat. But she would throw tantrums that this is not where I want to be. I want you to give me food. She will go back to that preacher and say, eat. God, uh, the, the, the father will bring her back and put her to sit down. Uh, she will throw tantrums again. This went over and over and over and over. But the revelation out of that, that she got anyway, she, it was her husband that was telling her this story. And she, the husband was frustrated about the thing because the child could not really understand that he's just wanting to place her in the perfect place that she needs to be so that when he brings her the food, she will be most comfortable to eat that food. But she was just laughing about it until the, the, the Holy Spirit ministered unto her. That is the same thing that I want us to pray for every woman who is expecting uh, uh, God to bless them this morning, that they will have, uh, 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 they will be a better versions of themselves, that they will be placed in the right positioning, that they need to be in the right state of mind, in the right character mindset, in the right, uh, 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 even physically, uh, 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 situations in life, even career, whatever thing may be, that God will place their tr his children in that position that when he is ready to bless them, that they will be able to carry this blessing with grace. They will be able, they will not look at it and say, oh no, they feel bad about themselves and feel like, oh no, I am, I don't know, what about this thing about me? Would this person accept? Or what about, I, I, I am not, I am not, I am not, uh, 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 I don't think this is the right time. God is the God of, uh, of, of, of perfect time. Me. And I just want us to pray for our ladies Amen. that God will begin to amass His blessings upon them. God will begin to bring out the better creation, the better, the best out of them in, in ways that they themselves do not even begin to know or realize it. For them to begin to see, they are not just women who are waiting and praying about husbands every day, but they are people whom God has sent on earth for a purpose. They are people whom God has sent on earth with a, with a zeal, with, with a talent to, to, to be a blessing unto many. They are not just women who are aspiring to be wives, but they are women of power, of valor, they are women who carry a power, a grace upon them to change lives, to cause people to draw nearer to God, to, 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 to bring happiness into the lives of many, to be best friends to people, to show love to people, to sacrifice unto people, to do things that are of God, to carry the glory of God, the light of God upon their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, that you will commit your daughters. 
who are looking on to you, hoping on to you for that blessing that we pray, oh Lord, for strategic placement. We pray, oh Lord, for strategic placement, not just in the, the physical placement, in the right places, oh Father, but strategic placement in their careers, strategic placement, oh Father, in, 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 their, in, their, in their mindset, in their character, in their spirit minds, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, oh Father, for a divine revelation upon their lives. We pray, oh Lord, for mind opening, for a new understanding of all that you encompass. May they begin to see, oh Father, the things that you are doing in their life and embrace it, oh Lord, and begin to manifest and walk in them, oh Lord, knowing that and having the confidence in you that you never fail, knowing and having the confidence in you that you, in you what you say you will do is what you will do, that you will pray, oh Father, that you build them in your spirit, may you build them in your light, may you build them in your love, in the name of Jesus Christ, that when you do bless them, oh Lord, they will have the grace to carry that blessing on. They will have the grace, oh Lord, to maintain that marriage in your spirit. They will have the grace, oh Father, to walk, oh Lord, in that blessing and remain contented knowing that you are God and not depart from you in the middle of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Let us pray for every woman who is expecting the fruit of the room. I want us to pray for them that God will train us to be the type of parents that he wants us to be. And not every woman who has given birth is a mother. Not every woman who has given birth is a good parent. Not every person who has given birth deserves to be a parent. But there are some people that are deserving of this parenthood, but they do not have this blessing. And so in as much as we are praying for the gift of a child for these people, I want us to pray also for those who do have the children, that they will begin to become better parents because for the sake of these children, they deserve the best. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, that we commit our every woman, we commit ourselves unto you. Me standing here, oh Lord, as a standing as, 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 as a point of contact for every woman out there who is expecting a fruit of the womb as well as who has a child but has not been able to take proper care of this child that they are pre oh lord that may you train us to be the kind of parents oh lord that we have to be for the betterment of these children you are giving us children oh lord because you want us to raise them in you because you want us to train them in a certain way so as to better glorify your name but lord if we if we ourselves we are wrecked if we ourselves are not in you if we ourselves are women who are, who are who are of the world how can we better bless raise these children for you we are sick, we are praying this not for our sake oh lord but for the sake of the innocent children because you said that anyone who that you you, you are happy with anyone who brings the children closer to you and so we are praying oh lord jesus christ for the unborn children for those who have been born in the name of jesus christ have mercy and have compassion and begin to walk upon the lives of the parents oh father may you you bless the, the, the ones who have not had the children, the thing that they are lacking, that it may you fill their life, fill it up, make their life whole again in the name of Jesus Christ. And those who already have the children, but they are lacking in their parenting skills, that they will pray, oh Lord, for a divine teaching. We pray, oh Lord, may you open the scenarios, opportunities for them to begin to learn how to be the best parents they can ever be. May they begin to, 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 to understand that this is how they have to learn from their children. This is the fact that the fact that they have given birth to these children. They have to love them like you love us. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we will pray for your grace, a special grace upon them. We pray for a, a, a special miracle upon their, your daughters, that we will begin to carry, carry special gifts, your gifts that you have Ah, la shinda la bara sata tata la ba shake te bosa in kala shake te la baru shanda la kata la bara kete isen de kala bara sha kalis de te 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 rokoto lo shunda la kata la ba zekete. In the name of Jesus Christ, that we trust and we believe, only You can do it. Only You can give us this miracle. Only You can bless our wombs, no matter what shape or size that womb is. Even if it is missing, there is nothing impossible for You to do. And we trust and we believe in you that what you say you will do, you will do it. Amen. Amen. Finally, we're going to pray for every home that is at the verge of wreckage in any form. Uh, you know, sometimes, most of the times, uh, 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 most, the wreckage is coming because that home is not fruitful. That home is not carrying the spirit of God. There are spirit of God homes that do carry problems. I just said most of the times, I know say all the time, okay? 
But I want us to pray that our homes will become will, will begin to be fruitful because God is commanding us that we should be fruitful in every manner. And being fruitful, it means that in everything that we are doing, we see the light of God. We see the glory of God. We see the brightness of God. We see basically Christ. So if our homes are, are we are getting divorced for no reason because the devil is attacking us and we just cannot fight it and then we're giving up, that means probably our angels, our angels are not doing their job. And so I want us to deploy our angels this morning upon our lives, our marriages, that they will begin to realign things, begin to put things back into place where they are supposed to be. May it begin to touch their hearts. May the spirit of God fall heavily upon us that we, we will begin to see the light of God, begin to walk in the love of Christ. There is no way we can walk in the love of Christ and things do not align in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, that we pray for every home, every marriage, our marriage is so Father. It, it may seem good, oh Lord, but we do not know the battle that lies ahead. But Lord, we are praying this day for the spirit of God to fall mightily upon our homes. We pray, oh Father, that may we as individuals begin to walk in the likeness of Christ. We pray, oh Father, as individuals, mothers, daddies, children, Lord Jesus Christ, that may we begin to walk in your love. That in your love, oh Father, we know that there is fulfillment. We know that we will always find joy. We will always uh, be protected because we will find your we will find shelter in you. Once we walk in you, once we if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. This scripture, in fact, I want to read this scripture. It says, uh, I think it's John 15, it says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Because we cannot maintain these marriages by ourselves. We need to, 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 to go back to Christ. The one who is the author of homes. The one who is the author of marriages. The, only, the one who knows all. The one who is the beginning and the end. That we reconnect with you. We reconnect our marriages with you. We come back under your shelter. We will come back into your dwelling place we come back oh lord under your wings and we say father bring love into our homes bring light into our homes make our homes fruitful oh father let our homes oh lord be full of your spirit may it be full of your love may it be full of your joy in the name of jesus christ we reconnect ourselves because we know that by ourselves we cannot do it you are love itself so how can we love you we are love itself, so how can we love one another if we cannot if, we, if you if you do not pour your love upon us so lord we are praying for your love to be poured down on us in the name of jesus christ we need you lord and we trust Trust in you, we believe in you, and we say, Let your will be done for our homes in Jesus' mighty name. We pray, Amen. 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 Our Amen. Psalms 20 it says, May the Lord answer us when we are in distress, and may the name of the God of Jacob protect us. Amen. Amen. May He send us help from His sanctuary and grant us support from Zion. Amen. Amen. May He remember all our sacrifices and accept our burnt offerings. Amen. Amen. May he give us the desires of our hearts and make all our plans succeed. Amen. Amen. We will shout for joy when we are victorious and we will lift up our banners in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Amen. May the Lord grant all of our requests. Amen. Amen. Now we know that the Lord, the Lord saves his anointed. He answers us from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Amen. Mm. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we, the transforming women, trust in the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Mm. They are brought down to their knees, but we start, we rise up and stand firm. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord, save the transforming woman. Answer us when we call. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and amen. And amen. Thank you, ladies, for today, Sister Gladys. Well, you know, I've really adopted you as my covenant sister. Thank you so much for this for sharing with us i think that um all of us have a responsibility to play when we talk about sacrificial love you might have been trying to love people but you can grow in love you can go in love and so it is very important for us to work on that for those of us who don't even have any love temperature at all we want to start by loving those people who are unlovable to us people who are just 
it seems as if they are designed to be mean. That's how we start testing our Christianity. And that's a proof to show that you have made to Jesus when you do things that are out of the flesh and your spirit man compels you to do them even when you don't want to do them. I pray the Lord will help us as we keep meeting every Monday and that things will be shifting, some things will be dropping and some things will be picking them up in the spirit. Thank you all for joining us today. She concluded by saying that one of the signs to show love is to go ahead and hit the share button. You don't pay to do that, to be a blessing to the ministry as well. So if you're actually still watching us and you have not shared, what are you waiting for? You want to start loving by start sharing and then you go in love. And if you are actually on the Zoom and you have not done that as well, I mean, we don't need to preach much about those who are on the Zoom. We get more from us, but then thank you so much much for your sacrifice for your time for your commitment to be here with us for the last one hour 30 minutes we do 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 appreciate you but let's just pray father i want to thank you we give you praise and we give you glory what an amazing privilege for us to have started and completed it is because of you we are able to see the end of today's fellowship we thank you for every single individual and every single woman that has been able to join us during this live fellowship and those who will join us and watch the video later we are grateful for these souls that you have brought to us this morning we what will not be able to explain, you know, and express the way we feel, the level of gratitude we have in our hearts. But you are the one that searched the hearts of men and you know how much we are grateful as a ministry. We have come to say thank you. We thank you for your work that we have heard this morning. We pray that this word will become fruitful. This word will not die in a hurry. We pray that it becomes seed, that as we have heard it, the Holy Ghost will begin to remind us daily whenever we are faced with the test of showing our love. We pray that this day, the Holy Ghost will bring it to our members and will be able to put the right thing into action father we thank you because we know that through your word will be transformation your word has edified your word has blessed and we know that your word will not leave us the same therefore as a fellowship and as a group this morning we begin to declare and we declare that this week is open in the name of god the father in the name of god the son and in the name of god the holy spirit we ask that you cause your face to shine upon us let your countenance shine so bright upon us we decree and we declare that this week is blessed everything that we do this week is blessed Wherever the soul of our feet with us is weak, we shall possess it. We come against every plan and counsel of the enemy concerning our life. We decree that we shall not be victims of casualty. We shall not be victims of pain. We shall not be victims of tears. There will be any reason why we gather this week to mourn with anyone. And if there should be any reason why we gather, it should be a reason for celebration. Father, we thank you because your word can never fail. We thank you because we know that the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow to it. And we are grateful for all your promises you have given to us. Tomorrow is the last day of the month, and as we meet again tomorrow for our triumphant prayers, we pray that you will keep us, you will preserve us, nothing will be missing and nothing will be broken. Take all the glory and all the honor this day in Jesus' matchless name. We have prayed, amen and amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. We decree that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Facebook family. We do love and we appreciate your effort. We'll see you tomorrow midnight for the triumphant prayers. Bye for now.